Hi everyone, this is Dr. Pruitt. Welcome to this week's EKG. We're going to start with an 82 year old male who has a history of several previous heart attacks, he tells you. So we know he has coronary artery disease and he also has high blood pressure and he is presenting with chest pain that feels just like his last heart attack. So it's a very concerning presentation. He tells you he's already taken four nitroglycerin. Uh, to help with the pain and it didn't get better. So you get your vital signs right away. It looks like a heart rate of 55, a little slow, but not terrible. Blood pressure 128 over 77. I'm happy to see that with all that nitro he's got on board. 97% on room air, everything else checks out. We wanna get a 12 lead right away within the first five minutes of arrival for this guy. If we can, this is what you see. I'll let you take a look, see what you think about it, and then we'll go through it together. Start the same way every time. So the first question we ask is what is the rate? The computer tells us we've got a rate of 63. Uh, I wanna just confirm that with my eyes. So I'm looking for a QRS that matches up with one of those thick red lines so we can count down. That's the way I like to do it. So here's a QRS that's on a thick red line. We're gonna count down 300, 150, 100, 75, 60. We're between 60 and 75. I agree with 63. Good to go on the rate. Next, we move on to our rhythm. So we ask two questions here. Is there a P wave before every QRS? And is this a regular rhythm or is it irregular? So this one, there's a little bit of artifact in here and it's hard to tell uh, with the P waves, but I think I see a P wave right here. Lead two is generally gonna be your best place to see these. I see another one right here, another one right here. Um, here's one. So going, marching through, I'm not sure I see one with this beat, but I see one here, here, here here um, and here. So we'll call this a sinus rhythm. Uh, generally looks pretty regular to me. I don't see any big spaces or little spaces that would um, catch my eye and make me really want to get out my, my calipers or, or check and see if it's regular. So we'll call this regular sinus rhythm. Uh, next we move on to axis and this is where this one gets a little bit tricky and I'll be honest I had to spend a little bit of time thinking about this. Um, but we'll, we'll do it the same way every time. So we start with lead one, that's our left thumb, right? And uh, the direction of the QRS vector is the way that our thumb is gonna end up. And so this is down, our left thumb is down here. And then we look at lead AVF, and same thing, AVF is our right thumb, and the majority of this QRS vector is down. And so what we have here is extreme right axis deviation. And this is a little bit unusual, and I think it's a little, we'll get to why it's unusual in a little bit, but these are, these are Q waves here. And if you remember, we talked about Q waves before. I think that's throwing off our axis here. Um, but we have extreme right axis deviation here at the end of the day for whatever reason. Moving on to our intervals, we're gonna look at our QRS. Our QRS is greater than 120, so we have a wide QRS. Anytime we have a wide QRS, we're gonna look at lead V1 and see why. Um, and what we see here is a right bundle branch block. If you remember the blinker trick, the uh, majority of the QRS vector is up here. You turn your blinker up, um, you're turning to the right. We have a right bundle branch block. It also looks a little bit like an M or an RSR prime. Um, all of those are indicative of a right bundle branch block. So our QRS is wide. This is in the setting of a right bundle. Next, we're looking at our QTC. We want that to be less than 450, it is, so I'm okay with that for now. And then we get to move on to our ST segments, and this is where we're gonna do our learning points today. And so starting the same way every time, I read generally from left to right. So uh, two, three AVF are our inferior leads. I'm looking for any T wave inversions, ST depressions, or ST elevations. And what I see here is just basically a big Q wave, right? And so we know this guy has had heart attacks before. So I'm wondering if that could be related to his previous problems, because I see Q waves also, a major downward deflection here could be a Q wave. And so I'm worried if he's had an old inferior infarction. But also what I'm seeing here is some ST depression in lead three. So something's not quite right here. I can't tell right now if it's old or not, but it caught my eye. As I move on, I look at our high lateral leads, so one and AVL, and this is where our problem is. We have ST elevation with T wave inversions greater than one millimeter, and these are in contiguous leads, right? And so we have ST elevation here, and 
what else do we see? And this is where our axis deviation came into play, but we have these big Q waves here. So my suspicion is this guy told you he had time to take four nitro. I think this has been going on for a while. These Q waves are pathological and are indicating some dead tissue here. And so we have ST elevation with developing pathological Q waves. Normally with this distribution of ST elevation, you'd see your reciprocal changes in 2,3 ABF, but I'm concerned that he had a previous heart attack here and maybe this tissue is dead and not conducting those reciprocal changes like it typically would in an otherwise healthy heart. So concerning changes here, I think we have a STEMI. Uh, as I move on to the anterior and septal leads, same thing. So right bundle branch block, it's normal to have T wave inversions in V1 and V2. These are called discordant changes. Um, that's okay. But where we get into our differences here is this is ST depression here. Can you see in V3? V4, V5, V6. This is some pretty diffuse depression all across the anterior and lateral leads. So, so ST depression here. So even though you're not seeing your reciprocal changes in your inferior leads, you're seeing a lot of ST depression over here with ST elevation in the high lateral leads. I would agree with the computer that this is a lateral infarct and it's probably acute. And so when we think about what's going on with this, it's probably a left circumflex, kind of close to the left main. So we've got elevation in one in AVL, which is way up here. And this is kind of hard because the heart, of course, is a 3D object. But your, your problem is probably somewhere up in here, or over in here, right? And on the where we're seeing our reciprocal changes is kind of on the front here. And so I think it's a high, probably left circumflex. We're not seeing our changes in 2, 3, and AVF because I think he's got some old damage there that's just not able to reflect it. And so when we take another look at our 12 lead, what we have here is a normal sinus rhythm with a rate of 63, but we've got a very high lateral STEMI with elevation in 1 and AVL, diffuse ST depressions in the anterior um, anterior and lateral leads with some old um, old inferior changes as well in the setting of a right bundle branch block. So it's a little bit of a complicated one today, but really not that complicated when you think about it. ST elevation with reciprocal depressions. This counts as a STEMI. We want to get aspirin on board as quick as we can, get that guy loaded, give the hospital a heads up that you're coming, get that cath lab ready, and get him reperfused. And in the meantime, remember, all of these are inherently unstable. Um, and since we know he's got some already previous heart disease, be ready for him to get worse. And so you want to have the pads on, you want to anticipate uh, any kind of dysrhythmias, be ready to pace or be ready to defibrillate if you need to. And that is it for today. Thank you for joining us for our lateral STEMI and I'll see you next week.